Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? We are still in the sevens. We're actually about to wrap it up. We're at Psalm 107 right now. Um, we only got a few more, but I think this is going to get us past the weekend. Um, so we may end up doing the video, the, o the overview video next week sometime. I don't know yet. We'll see what happens. The Lord wills, that's what we'll do. And uh, this morning I shared a video just now on the community tab. And um, it's only a 38 minute video, a lot of confirmations in there of what we've already seen in the Word and what we've been talking about. And the subject of that video, the, the core subject of that video is a love of the truth. And that's a hallmark characteristic of a true born again believer is a love of the truth, a desire to know the truth. Not knowing the truth, wanting to know the truth. Because none of us know the truth perfectly. We're always on a search for more. But there are a lot of people who have gotten this idea in their head. Oh, excuse me. Oh, that they've already got it figured out. Well, no. That's impossible. We can't possibly figure it out. Not completely. That's why we're led by the Lord. But there's a lot of people that think they got it. It's okay, Lord, I got this. I'll, I'll just step aside. I'll do, do it my way. Wrong answer. You should actually be following him, looking for a place where he sits down and listen to him teach. Notice that's what he did in his ministry. He moved. He didn't move, move according to what anybody else was, going, was doing. He moved and they followed him. And when he stopped and sat down, they stopped and sat down and listened to him teach. That's what we should be doing. Instead of thinking we got it figured out, let the Lord lead on everything. Because you might be in a, oh, excuse me, a particular Bible study, and the Lord leads you into something else. I, I've done that a bunch of times. There's times where I've started a study. We're in Isaiah right now, and all of a sudden, and even the um, parables of the Bible playlist. And all of a sudden, I'm led into something else. Or I'm getting the brakes put on for doing any more videos on a particular study we're doing. And then when the appropriate time comes, that that next video that I'm going to do for that whatever chapter we're covering becomes very relevant. And we have it, something that, so it's applicable. And uh, I realize that's the Lord leading on that. He goes, well, I don't want you to cover this yet. But there's a time coming when I'm going to have you do this. And it's going to work out really good. And it's... That's how it works. So, the love of the truth is, has got to be there. You having a personal desire to want to know what the right answer is. Whew, excuse me. What the right answer is. has got to be present. And in most cases, the, in, the, in the true born-again believer, it's an uncontrollable desire to know the truth. Not say, well, this is what I know, so this is what I want to go with. Or this person knows that this is my biggest pet peeve. Is it? Well, that's what this person said. Okay, well, what about, what about them? Did Jesus ever say, go to this person and listen to them? No. Well, they understand the Bible better than me. Jesus understands it perfectly. Why aren't you going to him for the understanding? Why are you going to somebody on YouTube? Why are you going to some pastor or some minister? They lead, but they don't know it perfectly. You go to the Lord. See, that's another that's another thing. There's a common understanding among Christians. Well, I don't know the Bible, but this person has been uh, anointed by the Lord to go into this position and do this. So I'm going to go listen to what they say. Well, their perspective is not 100% correct. They just happen to be led into that type of ministry. We go to the Lord for the truth because that's where the truth is. It's, he is truth. But too many people today put too much faith in people thinking they're going to tell them the exact truth. So I don't ever tell anybody to listen to me. Don't listen to me. Go look at it for yourself. I'm just showing you where it's at. I'm just taking and putting a big stick in the ground with a flag on it showing you where these things are. It's up to the individual to go and look it up. If you have a love of the truth, that's what you'll do. I'm going to go look more into this. 
Excuse me. I apologize. Man, I'm yawning like crazy. Oof. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. And uh, Psalm 107, thanksgiving to the Lord for his great works of deliverance. And it's funny as our, our understanding verse comes out of Psalm 86. But it's verses 1 through 17, so it's, there's still a 7 present. <laughs> but it goes along with this too. So let's get into prayer. Let's talk to our Holy Father about the love of the truth. Let's glorify him for giving us that. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. And to worship you and to lift your name up as our God, and, and bless that name, and to give thanks to you for the blessings you pour out on us every day, the, the, of the things you show us in your word, the, the understanding that you're giving us, and the love of the truth that is present within our hearts. A desire, a desire to know what your desire is, what your will is, a desire to know what your word says. Not what man says, what your word says. A desire to know what you really want us to know. Because not many have that. They go to other people for the understanding instead of going to your word. You made your word so easy to get so we don't have to go to another person. Back, back in history, there were people we could go to and we could trust because they had that desire to, for the truth. Now we don't have that many. And you knew, you saw that coming. That's why you presented us with a complete word. So we could go and we could learn for ourselves. We could read and study for ourselves. It used to be that people, everyday people couldn't get a hold of these things. Now it's in every bookshelf. It's in every app store. It's everywhere. Our world is saturated with your word. But as your word your word saturated the world, the desire to know the truth has disappeared. It's a terrible state. Terrible, terrible state. But Father, thank you for giving us that desire. Thank you for making that one of the hallmarks of our of our personality and behavior is that we want to know what the truth is. Even in our personal lives, we want to know the truth. We don't want lies. And I've made a lot of people mad because of my desire for the truth. But I'd rather have the truth. Father, this morning we're going to pray Psalm 107. Thanksgiving to the Lord for his great works of deliverance. And because you are our Redeemer, Joel talks about it. Uh, several other books talk about you being our Redeemer. Jeremiah talks about it. Job talks about it. Um, all the books pretty much talk about it. You're a Redeemer. You are the architect. You are the author of our salvation. And you paid the price for our deliverance through the man, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So that's part of your works, and we should declare your works, and we should sing the praises of your works. We're going to do that today. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a desolate way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them, delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city for a dwelling place. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And Father, that is what we are doing right now. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. Those who sat in darkness and in the shadows of death, bound in affliction and irons, because they rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High, therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, and broke their chains in pieces. Oh, that man would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he has broken the gates of bronze, and cut the bars of iron in two. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, were afflicted. 
Their soul abhorred all manner of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them, and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving, and declare his works with rejoicing. Those who go down to the sea in ships, who do business on great waters, they see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commands and raises the stormy wind, which lifts up the waves of the sea. They mount up to the heavens, they go down again to the depths, their soul melts because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like drunken men, and are at their wit's end. Then they cry out to the Lord for their trouble, in their trouble, and he brings them out of their distresses. He calms the storm so that its waves are still. Then they are glad because they are quiet. So he guides them to their desired haven. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the assembly of the people and praise him in the company of the elders. He turns rivers into a wilderness and the water springs into dry ground a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of those who dwell in it. He turns a wilderness into pools of water and dry land into water springs. There he makes the hungry dwell, that they may establish a city for a dwelling place, and sow fields and plant vineyards, that they may yield a fruitful harvest. He also blesses them, and they multiply greatly, and he does not let their cattle decrease. When they are diminished and brought low, through oppression, affliction, and sorrow, he pours contempt on princes and causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Yet he sets the poor on high, far from affliction, and makes their families like a flock. The righteous see it and rejoice, and all iniquity stops its mouth. Whoever is wise will observe these things, and they will understand the loving kindness of the Lord. Father, every day we understand your loving kindness more and more. And you've put it on my heart to declare these things here in these videos. You've put it on my heart to give thanks for your wonderful works that you do to us. The many blessings we don't even see, we give thanks for. it. You've put it on my heart to share many of these things, works that you do that are listed and more in this psalm. It is a great thing to be able to see these things and know these things and then be able to address them in prayer and give thanks to them in glory of your name. Thank you, Father, for all of these things. Thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you for calling us out of this world and delivering us, giving us a chance, giving us a hope, showing us redemption. Our understanding verse comes out of Psalm 86, and it's, Great is your steadfast love. Incline your, your, incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am godly. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all the day. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul? For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. In the day of my trouble, I call upon you, for you answer me. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your power. Sorry, for great is your steadfast love toward me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. O God, insolent men have risen up against me. A band of ruthless men seeks my life, and they do not set you before them. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me, and be gracious to me. Give me, or give your strength to your servant, and save the son of your maidservant. Show me a sign of your favor, that those who hate me may see and be put to shame, because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. What a great understanding verse, because 
It's an understanding verse just that talks about exactly what, or is doing exactly what Psalm 107 said. Oh, that man would cry out. Or when man cries out, you deliver him. This is David crying out. All of us, all of us in the afflictions that we have, all of us in the problems that we deal with, you will deliver us from them if we but cry out to you. Sister Jennifer had a testimony yesterday. That's what she did. Sister Sissy, and you answered it. We have such an amazing Father in Heaven, yet we don't even address you or call upon you. We don't cry out to you. We don't reach out to you for help. Why? You're there. You're right there, ready to help. You want to help. But you want us to call out for it. You want us to acknowledge it. You want us to recognize that we need that help. And people refuse to do it. What is the matter with people? What is wrong with people? Do they not think you're real? To believe in Jesus, you must believe in you. They must believe. We must believe in you. It's a sad state that our world is in. It's a, a sad place we've come to that this is what we end up doing and it's unfortunate that this is the best we can do I would love to see us do better but we can only do so much we can only reach so many people we can only establish truth in so many hearts all the words in the world won't make any difference if somebody doesn't want to see and that is why you have a time frame coming that is going to shake people out of their stupor out of their slumber and wake them up so that they will see the light they will turn to you and cry out to you and get saved all we have to do is trust in you and believe have faith And everything will be fine. But we must rely on you for everything. You created all of this. You set all this in motion. You do all these things for us every day. Why would we not turn to you in truth? Why would we not rely on you? And I pray that you put it in our hearts. That we are to call out to you when we need something. That when we are in trouble, we cry out to you. And ask for help. And then wait patiently in faith for you to send that help. I also pray as I end this prayer that you put that uncontrollable love of the truth in our hearts. That our desire will be to know the truth and to seek, seek it out and search for it. In doing so, we find you because you are truth. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. And thank you for your great love. And thank you for your salvation. And thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who has paid the price to save us. And who is coming back to collect us. Who is coming to change this world and to set things right. We long for that day. I know he does, but we long for that day. We love you, Father. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for morning prayer. I love, I love how these things, these psalms are coming together. And it just seems like about the time you get to where you can't you really find anything new, all of a sudden you find a bunch of new stuff. And he's leading other people into a lot of things that weren't normally something, a topic of discussion. J.D. Farrakh is doing a Bible study in Ecclesiastes. And they were on Ecclesiastes. They just uploaded the video for about four or five hours ago. That's not the only person who's in Ecclesiastes. There's other people that are in Ecclesiastes. I think that's amazing. Because remember when he led me to that, I got a whole playlist on every chapter. And it's awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing what J.D. finds in chapter 12. I, I would like to see if maybe he spots what I spotted in there. Love of the truth, guys. It's a desire to, to find the truth within the word. Not in the world. 
in the word. Love you guys very much. I bless you all richly in Jesus' name. Pray you have a fantastic morning. Have that love of the truth. Don't, don't trust other people. Don't trust me. Don't trust any person. Trust God and trust his word. I'm meeting people more and more every day that the, the great deception is becoming more evident. They don't believe the Bible is accurate. That's the great deception. You can't trust it. You got to go to these other books and every other understanding they go to, every other one leads them into something completely different and not to the one true living God. We got to stay in the truth. We got to stay focused on it. We got to do what we can to help people with boldness and with, with confidence, help people understand where that truth is. And it's not where they think it is. All right. I love you guys. And I will see you all in the next video.